Okay, this is an amount of study, uh, amount of substance question. It's worth eight marks in total, and you will see it over three stages. So I'm going to recommend that you pause, have a go at A. When you've done that, move on to try B, and then pause again on C. Once you've tried all of it, then go through and check your answers um, and see how close you got and see if you're where you should be. So when you're ready, start this question. Now have a go at B. And now have a go at C. So in the first instance on this question, I'm going to approach it as I would any reacting masses question, but <clears throat> or actually any empirical formula calculation. And so the only difference between this and an empirical formula calculation is I don't have elements at the top of the table. I have the compound and I have water. And I can then start to think about putting the information in. But I've still got a little bit to do on this one before I can get there. Because I've got some experimental data. I know that if I started with 25.47 grams after I'd added to a 24.35 gram evaporating basin that I had added 1.12 grams of sodium carbonate with H2O, so with water of crystallization. But I can also see that after I heated it, the mass went down and that was the water evaporating. So I can use those figures to work out that there were 0.57 grams of sodium carbonate left at the end of the experiment. Now, if I know that I had 0.57 grams and I know I started with 1.12 grams of crystals, I can work out that there were 0.55 grams of H2O. From there, I can go to the periodic table. I can use atomic masses to find the molecular masses. Sodium carbonate, 106, and water is 18. And now I've got M and I've got MR, I can work out the number of moles. So I do my calculation, M over MR, and I get these figures, 0.0054 and 0.0306. Now we're then going to divide by the smallest. In this case, it's 0.0054. And I get a ratio that's unusual in this type of question and unusual in most reacting mass, in most empirical formula calculations. But the question doesn't need an integer, which is what we would normally look for. It wants your answer to two decimal places. And so we end up with our value of x is 5.68. And I've highlighted here where you would pick up the marks. You're getting it for the masses of the sodium carbonate and water. You're getting it for the working out that gets you to the molar values. You're getting it for the ratio and you're getting it for correctly identifying x. Now, on the next question, we were told that the correct value for x is 10. We need to suggest a reason why. Now, it, it's, it's very easy to just say experimental error, but we need to be specific. And we need to be particularly specific, which is that x is higher than our experimental value. There is more water than we found, and we've got to find a way to explain that. So the answer that we're looking for is that maybe not all of the water evaporated. And a key term here that comes up in a lot of practical questions, maybe we didn't heat it to dryness. You can heat to constant mass. So you heat it, you take the mass, you heat it again, and you take the mass again. If the mass has gone down, you carry on heating. If the mass stays the same over time, that's a really strong indicator that all of the water has evaporated. On to the final question now, or the final part of the question. Um, how could we improve the procedure using the same apparatus? The same apparatus is key here. We're not thinking about what we can add for insulation, etc. And it's actually touching on something that we've already discussed. If you heat it to constant mass, then you can be confident that all of the water has evaporated. And that's a definite improvement on where we were.